स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया so then we can look at another generalization of the problem and the second case of the generalized isoperimetric problem is when we have multiple multiple isoperimetric constraints multiple isoperimetric constraints so then what to do in this case so we see that suppose suppose again let us set up the problem so suppose i have y being the extremal y is the extremal of j of y so y being the extremal of j of y subject to subject to i1 of y is equal to l1 and i2 of y is equal to l2 so we have two isoperimetric constraints right to meet both constraints okay so so now what to how to derive how to derive the condition or the necessary condition for y so that y should satisfy now again let us go back to our discussion on the standard derivation of euler lagrange we were perturbing in a standard derivation of euler lagrange we were trying to find the first variation delta j of y and then uh, we looked at subject to subject to one constraint that is i of y is equal to l now given the fact that we have two constraints given the fact that we have two constraints we cannot perturb freely we have to perturb in such a way we have to perturb our extremal in such a way so that the extremals always satisfy both the constraints simultaneously right so so what i just said is the following to to meet both constraints to meet both both constraints to meet both constraints and have an arbitrary term and have an arbitrary term to meet both constraints and have an arbitrary terms term in variation arbitrary term in variation of y have an arbitrary term in variation of y we use the correction terms we use the correction the correction of y we use the correction term right y hat which is equal to the perturbation of y as follows so epsilon 1 eta 1 epsilon 2 eta 2 plus epsilon 3 eta 3 right so this is my regular perturbation and these quantities are such that these satisfies i1 and i2 so the well these quantities are introduced so that so that i1 and i2 are satisfied the two isoperimetric constraints are satisfied okay so then so then again let me introduce introduce everything in the vector notation so introduce my epsilon vector which is epsilon 1 epsilon 2 epsilon 3 and my eta vector the perturbation vector which is eta 1 eta 2 eta 3 and i see that so i see that eta k my eta k is are all second order differentiable from x0 to x1 such that such that my eta k of x0 is equal to eta k of x1 is equal to 0 right so the perturbations are such that they vanish on the boundary that is needed for all sets of perturbation so again approaching in a similar way that we approached earlier for lagrange for isoperimetric constraints with one constraint 
we set up we set up the condition for extremal as follows. So, the condition for extremal this time would be the gradient of theta of epsilon bar minus summation lambda k of gamma k of epsilon bar set equal to 0, right, where, where my gradient is the gradient operator is the following operator. These are the respective derivatives with respect to epsilon 1, epsilon 2, epsilon 3 and these are eventually evaluated at epsilon equal to 0. Okay. So, what I have is the following and then finally, what we have is, so where, where my, my uh, this theta functional, my theta functional is the perturbation functional. Okay, so, I am just rewriting uh, the extension case. So, the theta functional is the perturbation function x 0 to x 1 f of x comma y plus epsilon eta y plus epsilon eta comma y prime plus epsilon eta prime right d x and and my gamma k of epsilon is my isoperimetric perturbation in my isoperimetric constraints, which is, so this is the kth component, which is g k. So, my, my k is 1 and 2. So, k depends on the number of constraints that we have. Here, we have two constraints. So, g k of x comma y plus. So, so this is the perturbation here is y plus inner product of epsilon bar comma eta bar right. So, that is how the dot product. So, y plus epsilon eta comma y prime plus epsilon eta prime right d x. Okay. So, these are these are my following functions. So, let us say this expression is 1. So, this condition is 1 and again following the derivation that we did for the single isoperimetric condition, we see that we see that 1 that 1 eventually reduces to reduces to the following condition x 0 to x 1 eta j of del f del y minus minus the regular derivative with respect to x of partial f partial y prime set equal to 0 with f now equal to small f minus lambda 1 g 1 plus lambda 2 g 2, right. Okay. Notice that the term epsilon 1 eta 1 is arbitrary. So, we just want to remark that the term epsilon 1 eta 1 is arbitrary, arbitrary uh, with corrections, with corrections epsilon 2 eta 2 and epsilon 3 eta 3. The corrections are due to the respective isoperimetric constraints. Okay. So, so, which means this condition can now be reduced if we use if we use lemma 2 in our lecture 2, lemma 2 in our lecture 2, we can reduce this integral constraint into the differential constraint with the following condition. Okay, where f is this following and let me call this condition, let me call this condition as my condition 2, which is the necessary condition for the extremal. Okay. So, then that concludes the necessary the derivation of the necessary condition, except we need to remark a little bit about the existence of the Lagrange multiplier lambda 1 and lambda 2, whether under what conditions that what are the conditions under which these constants lambda 1 and lambda 2 exists. So, so what we are trying to discuss is the condition we are discussing is the condition for the existence. So, whatever we derived so far, whether it really makes sense or not or in other words, does this lambda 1 constants lambda 1, lambda 2 
at all really exists or not ok. Such that this condition 2 produces an extremal, produces an extremal ok. So, well again, so what is the condition? Let us recall the case for single isoperimetric constraint problem. All we did was we checked the rank of the Jacobian matrix and the rank of the augmented matrix and it turned out that the rank in that case in the isoperimetric problem with single constraint, the rank of the augmented matrix has an upper bound which is the rank of the Jacobian matrix. And similarly, it is the same situation in this case as well. So, we consider we consider the following, we consider this Jacobian matrix at 0, which is epsilon 1 equal to epsilon 2 equal to epsilon 3 equal to 0, all the epsilons set equal to 0 and, and what we have is, this is a matrix which is gradient of gamma 1 at 0. Okay, and gradient of gamma 2. So, we have two conditions so far. So, we see that this is a, uh, this is, this has two rows and this will have three columns because there are three components epsilon 1, 2 and 3. Okay. So, so this is of the form alpha 1, 1, alpha 1, 2, alpha 1, 3, alpha 2, 1, alpha 2, 2, alpha 2, 3, right, where my alpha i j is of this form is integral from x 0 to x 1 eta j of del g i del y minus d d x of del g i del y prime of d x. Okay. And my augmented matrix will be an additional row with the additional row replaced with the gradient of theta. Okay. So, my augmented matrix M f of 0 is the matrix M of 0 times grad of theta of 0, which is also equal to uh, will, will be the first two rows are similar alpha 1 1, alpha 1 2, alpha 1 3, alpha 2 1, alpha 2 2, alpha 2 3, the same set of functions. And finally, the last row will be beta beta 3 1, beta 3 2, beta 3 3, where, where my beta i j are well, well the first let index is always 3 here. So, beta 3 j are the gradient of theta with respect to epsilon and set epsilon equal to 0, I get that x 0 to x 1 of eta j of this quantity del f del y minus d d x of del f del y prime okay, d x. Okay. So, so, the condition, the condition for the existence, finally we are ready now to state the condition. The condition for existence of lambda 1 and lambda 2 is that the rank, the rank of the augmented matrix must be less than or equal to the rank of the Jacobian matrix. Okay. When that happens, we are guaranteed the existence of Lagrange multiplier leading to the extremal y. Okay. So, let us look at, we are going to end the discussion on this topic by looking at few examples. The, the example that I have in mind in this case is, we need to extremize again extremize j of y, which is integral from 0 to 1 y prime square dx subject to subject to the constraint. We have two constraint i 1 of y is equal to 0 to 1 y dx, uh, which is and i 2 of y is integral 0 to 1 x y dx and I set i 1 the first constraint equal to 2 some value and the second constraint is equal to half. So, and further we also have a set of fixed boundary conditions. We have two boundary conditions y of 0 set equal to y of 1 which is equal to 0. Okay. 
So, we need to extremize j subject to the two constraints i 1 and i 2. So, the solution is we directly we directly look at the Euler Lagrange equation here. So, we have our our extended function f to be f minus lambda 1 g 1 minus lambda 2 g 2 which is which is the following function y prime square. Uh, well, my my f is the following quantity and my g 1 is this quantity and my g 2 is this quantity here. So, I have that this function reduces to this one times y minus lambda 2 times x y. Okay? So, then if I use my Euler my Euler Lagrange equation my Euler Lagrange equation I get I am going to directly write down the ODE that we get. The ODE that we get is the following set of equation 2 y double prime plus lambda 1 plus lambda 2 x is equal to 0. Right? So, this is the equation that we get and we can readily solve this equation that is integrate this equation twice to get that y of x is minus lambda 2 of x cube by 6 minus lambda 1 by x square by 4 plus c 1 x plus c 0. So, we have four constants lambda 1, lambda 2, c 1 and c, c naught. However, note that we have we have two boundary conditions given by y 0 equal to y at 1 is equal to 0 and we have two constraints we have two constraints i 1 is 2 and the second constraint i 2 is half. So, from these four conditions I can readily find these four constants of integration and as well as the Lagrange constants. Uh, students can directly check that we get the answer as follows. We get c 1 equal to this and c 2 is 0, well c naught. Okay. So, so, that completes the solution to this problem with where extremal is given by this underlined equation. And before we end the discussion on this example, let us also uh, briefly look at the existence. Well, we already shown that lambda 1, lambda 2 are these values, but whether these values are unique or not or we could possibly get another extremal for a different value of lambda 1, lambda 2, we just do not know unless and until we check the rank of the Jacobian and the augmented matrix. So, so let us look at those quantities. So, for an arbitrary for an arbitrary perturbation arbitrary perturbation we see that my alpha 1 j is the following integral. So, I have directly used notice I have directly used these following formulas in our previous slide where my alpha j's are these quantities. So, I directly plug in the, the integrand of the constraints to get alpha i j. So, my alpha 1 j is integral of eta j dx and my alpha 2 j is integral of x times eta j dx. Right? And finally, my beta 3 j is integral from 0 to 1 to y prime eta j dx. Okay? So, so, notice well we do not know these perturbations eta j, but notice the following that beta of 3 comma j is well it is integral of 2 y prime eta j dx, but this is also equal to minus lambda 1 times eta j dx minus lambda 2 times integral of x times eta j dx. This is directly from our Euler Lagrange equation. Well, what I am saying is this is directly from this particular equation that we are looking at this relation. So, which means that beta 3 comma j is negative lambda 1 of alpha 1 comma j 
negative lambda 2 times alpha 2 comma j which means that my third row is linearly dependent or the rank of the conclusion is obvious here that the rank of my augmented matrix is e is bounded above by the rank of my Jacobian matrix. Okay? So, that concludes the discussion on this example and then let, let us now finally look at one uh, a third case of the generalization of the isoperimetric problem that is the case of several dependent variables, several dependent variables. Okay? So, we are talking about functional of the form j q bar, where q bar is a vector from t 0 to t 1 of L of t comma vector q comma vector q dot d t subject to subject to the isoperimetric constraint of the form i of q bar which is integral of t 0 to t 1 of g of t comma q bar comma q bar dot d t. Okay? So, we just look at the case with one isoperimetric constraint. So, we have that L and G are, are smooth, they have derivatives up to continuous derivatives up to second order and let us say that q bar is a smooth extremal, q bar is a smooth extremal of this setup. Right? So, extremal for j subject to subject to i, q bar is an extremal of j subject to i with with my boundary condition, with my boundary condition q bar of t 0 is q bar of 0 and q bar of t 1 is q bar of 1. So, we have sets of uh, vector set of two boundary condition, two boundary, two boundary conditions each of them are vector conditions okay? and with, with my isoperimetric constraint of the form of the form that i of q bar is equal to some constant l okay so the result is the result i am going to directly state the result because the, the proof follows the same similar case for uh, the problem with one variable that q bar is an extremal it's an extremal such that there exists a constant lambda so that q bar satisfies the equation the euler lagrange the system of euler lagrange equation satisfies satisfies n euler lagrange lagrange equation okay it satisfies n euler lagrange equation of the form d d t of del f del q j minus well let me let me just rewrite this equation in the next page i see that my set of euler lagrange equation are as follows d d t of partial partial q q k minus partial partial q k this is q k dot of f where my this is set equal to 0, where my k is from 1 to n. So, I have n constraints and my function f is l minus lambda g, right? my function is as follows. So, so that is my result. Let us quickly look at an example to this problem. So, the problem I have is I am going to revisit my DDoS problem. So, so the DDoS problem now is set up with an isoperimetric constraint. So, this time we are going to determine the curve, determine a curve, a curve gamma of length, length L. Let me take L greater than 2, so that I remove the case of rigid extremals containing, containing the points, the points P minus 1, which is 
which is minus 1 comma 0 and the points p 1 which is 1 comma 0 such that such that gamma is closed gamma is closed closed and the line segment from p 1 to well so gamma is closed we do not say anything beyond that and 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 the area enclosed is maximum. So, essentially what we have done is in the earlier version of Dido's problem we were trying to uh, stipulate the condition that a part of the curve lies on the x axis right. So, so now we have lifted we have lifted that condition. So, we have lift the restriction restriction that gamma gamma uh, part, well part of part of gamma lies on the x axis here ok. Well, certainly it passes through minus 1 comma 0 and 1 comma 0, but now the other half can very well be below the y axis. So, which means that which means that uh, uh, we can have uh, we have a, a much more generalized problem in this case. So, in this case now the area go, the area functional is going to be described by my Green's theorem because this is a much more general scenario. So, my Green's theorem says that my area my area functional is given by j of q bar is nothing but it is equal to half integral of x y dot minus y x dot of d x. This can well my parameter is t and the dot denotes the derivative with respect to t. This can be readily found from any standard multivariate calculus text and now I have the isoperimetric constraints isoperimetric constraint as follows. I see that i of q bar is also equal to integral from t 0 to t 1 square root of x dot square plus y dot square of d t is equal to l. So, this is my condition set equal to a constant l. So, now I have a case of uh, a case of constraint optimization with two variables two dependent variables and we directly set we directly set the system of two Euler Lagrange equations which are the following set of equations. So, let me directly write these two equations d d t of I am going to directly plug in the result ok minus uh, y dot this is set equal to 0 and then the second equation let me call this as 1 and the second one is d d t of minus y dot divided by square root of x square plus y square y dot square plus half x plus half x dot is equal to 0. So, from here I get I can directly integrate the first equation to see that this gives me lambda x dot by square root of x dot square plus y dot square uh, minus y is equal to c naught and from the second I get that this is also equal to minus lambda of y dot divided by square root of x dot square plus y dot square plus x this is also equal to c 1 right. From here I see that well I can directly I can directly uh, square and add from these two I can directly square and add to see that my extremal will follow this particular curve. So, x minus c 1 square plus y minus c naught square is equal to a constant lambda square. So, x and y are such that they lie on a circle circle with radius lambda with radius lambda ok and 
we have three this equation has three unknowns c 1, c naught and lambda, but we also have two boundary conditions. We have two boundary conditions plus we have one isoperimetric constraint, perimetric constraint and that will fully determine the system. Okay? That is going to determine my system or my unknown c 1, c 2 and, and lambda, the Lagrange multiplier. So, I end my lecture, I end my discussion at this point and in the next lecture, I am going to talk about the situation where we deal with constraints of the form which are algebraic or holonomic constraints as well as non-algebraic or differential or non-holonomic constraints. So, thank you for listening. Thank you very much.